Welcome to Buckaroo TV, your resource for B2B marketing for manufacturing and related industries. You create unrivaled products and services. We tell your story. Now on to the show. Welcome to Buckaroo TV. I'm your host, Deb Daly with Buckaroo Marketing New Media. Joining me today is Malachi Greb, owner of Elite Automation. Welcome to the show, Malachi. Hi, thanks for having me. Good to see you. And uh, just for our listeners, um, apparently you have some company in the room with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so we have three little parakeets here in, here in my little home office. What are their names? Uh, I don't know their names. <laughs> <laughs> I just call them the blue one, the white one, the yellow one. Okay, keep it simple. Keep it simple. <laughs> So uh, that way, if we hear a little bit of, if they want to chime into the interview, which they probably will, we won't, uh, we'll be more than happy to let them uh, chime in. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your background and how did you get to where you are today? So I started out about 10 years ago. Um, I started by working with a systems integrator and uh, I started while I was actually still in college. So while I was in college, uh, obviously I was looking for a position that was somewhat relatable to my degree. And uh, a teacher had directed me towards uh, a systems integrator company because at that point in time I wanted to travel. I, I, knew that I, I knew that I did not want to go to a manufacturing facility every day and go to the same place and clock in, clock out every day. Um, so she thought that'd be a good fit for me. And I went and I started working for the systems integrator and at first I was just kind of doing grunt work, um, doing mechanical assembly work, uh, some electrical wiring stuff, uh, things along those lines. And over the years, and as I increased my skills, I started doing PLC programming, robot programming, vision system programming, um, just different controls engineering aspects, electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. And, uh, through the course of doing that for a couple of years, then I kind of started leading more into taking all my own projects, doing project management work, um, and spent many years just kind of leading my own projects. And, and, I, and I was always chasing opportunity. Yeah. So what is Elite Automation and what are your areas of expertise? So Elite Automation is what's known as a systems integrator. Mm -hmm. And what systems integrators are, they either take other people's hardware and they bring them all together, program them together, and make it so that they can work together. So being things like a conveyor and a robot. So a robot picks something off the conveyor, maybe places it inside of a bin. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that involves things like PLCs, robot vision, uh, servo controls. And we try to focus and specialize in the robotic cells with vision systems. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's a big thing that uh, the company that I worked for, it's a big thing that they focused on as well. Overall, my skill set, I'm very strong in doing the robotic cells. That was kind of one of my like key duties as like an engineer is I would design, I would design layout. I would design, um, I do the risk assessments for the, for the cell. I would do all the programming inside the robot cell, um, things like that. And so generally the, the project is somewhat small in the amount of hardware that goes into it. So you may have like a total of like, six different things that you're doing inside that robot cell. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just a simple pick and place. Right. Other things you may be picking, doing a vision inspection, maybe doing a secondary vision inspection, um, maybe adding something to the part that you picked up and then placing it back into something else. Um, and all, all the different applications are different, but, uh, Overall, I think that that's just a good route to go. I, I, I like the robotic cells. Um, we do the, the entire automation process, mm -hmm. but 
that's just like one of the like key things that we really try to focus on and try to be really good at. Okay. Okay. How do you see um, robotics or since you've been involved with it for a while, how have you seen robotics change and grow over time within the manufacturing industry? Um, I think that manufacturing facilities, one, are definitely starting to get more accustomed to the ROI behind it mm -hmm. and, and how it just makes sense. Like uh, another big thing is like, you know, you, you have your different safety factors. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked for a glass with a glass company for quite a period of time. And obviously glass is not safe to handle. And at one point in time, they had humans handling the glass pretty much um, solely. Wow. And yeah, so it just, that right there in itself, like just made sense to, to put like robots and stuff in there. Sure. So there's sure. definitely like, you have ergonomical issues. You have like, you know, uh, immediate dangers. There's kind of just a ton of, uh, a ton of hazards that can be there. Um, Another big thing is just overall technology is getting more advanced. It's getting smarter. Um, I, I personally think that it's almost getting easier to do a lot of stuff mm -hmm. just because they're starting to become a lot more uh, built in functionality, built in features that in the past that you didn't have those features. You had to hard program and hard program them yourself. Right. We've experienced the same thing from the marketing technologies, you know, you, what you used to have to program by hand here or there. Now it's, you know, a lot of it comes in plug and play modules and then you just tailor and customize it um, based on, you know, what the desired end result would be. Nice. Are you seeing um, an increase in the human interface and robots? I think they call it cobots. Yeah. So I think the big thing with the collaborative robots, uh, I don't think there's as much like hand to hand uh, with the robot and human. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that the, the robot and the human are working directly with one another. Uh, it's more so that you can, um, it, it's a lot easier to set up a collaborative robot then it is a non-collaborative robot in, in a workspace with a human. So with a non-collaborative robot, you have to put fence, fencing up, some type of guarding. Basically, there's all kinds of safety requirements you have to meet to be able to like not put your fingers inside the cell, not, you know, things yeah. like that. I keep OSHA happy. Yeah, yeah. And so with the collaborative robots, you can eliminate that whole fencing scheme of things and that saves a lot of time on the install that saves money on the install um but the overall power behind it is is how quickly you can implement the system right right i assume that would be kind of the secret regardless of what robotic application that you have is is being able to determine how quickly you can get it up to speed yeah yeah absolutely how long does a typical project take on average? Uh, that's kind of uh, an impossible question to have an answer to because there's so many, like all of the projects are so dynamic. Mm -hmm. You might, you might have a project that um, you get a PO on and you have the project done in a month. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's because the customer had already ordered the, the parts. They know they knew everything that they was going to need, and you're just kind of implementing it. You're just setting everything up, programming it, things along those lines. Right. Um, and then you may have uh, larger projects that may take up to like nine months to do. Um, I mean, they can, they can take even longer than that uh, it, it, if you start getting to even more massive projects. Um, and then another big thing too is some companies move faster than others. So especially with their office department or whatever, yeah. Um, you know, you may have one company that has the same project as another company and it could be a three, three months 
difference in, in the actual start time and right. getting everything really rolling. Probably depending on approval processes and who has to be involved in the decision making yeah. and all of that to making sure it's yeah. exactly what they want. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, you mentioned uh, that you're a system integrator. What companies have you built robotics or built robots for? Uh, so I'm going to name off a few companies that are, are companies that we work for. Mm -hmm. Um, and so be like a Toyota mm -hmm. an SRG PGW, um, shot. What are some common challenges that, um, manufacturers face, uh, that, you know, or yeah. Um, so as far as the manufacturing process or like more so, uh, what drives the decision to, um, automate with robotics? Is it solely a cost savings measure? Uh, so this, yeah, this goes a little bit in like what we was discussing earlier. So there's definitely safety measures in there. Um, you know, so avoiding safety or yeah, keeping things as safe as possible. Um, ROI is a really big thing. You know, if, if there's, if they're looking at the, at a project and they're saying, Oh, uh, we have six people doing this thing over here and we can put one robot in it and do it. That's like, you know, they're getting a return on investment in like three months, you know? So it's like something like that. It's, it's a no brainer for them to pull the trigger on it. Right. Um, and th this has actually been a, a really big shift in the market here recently this past year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But um, a big push is that a lot of manufacturers are having a lack of employees. Um, they, they either are scared because of COVID or they are getting unemployment and just don't want to go back to work. Okay. Um, and so that has created a big push for like the collaborative robots for um, a system that's called Mir AMR, which okay. is autonomous uh, mobile vehicles basically. Okay. And they will basically transport parts from one area of a facility to another area. Okay. Um, yeah. So a lot of these things are kind of like fast to implement and, um, it's definitely a, a dynamic that is a push that wasn't necessarily a push uh, in the past because I think that manufacturers are, are always short on employees, mm -hmm. but this has definitely been like a huge, huge impact. Like I'm working on a project right now and um, this project was not even supposed to start for a year or two and they've moved it all the way up to right now basically. Right. Well, and I think, you know, a lot of times people immediately think, uh oh, I'm going to be replaced by a robot. But um, what I see oftentimes is it's not that you're replaced, but you're moved to another area where your talent, where an employee's talent skills are, are needed more. Uh, yeah. and, and so, you know, it really is a benefit, not just safety standpoint, but being able to utilize people's talents and skills to the greatest ability that they can. Absolutely. Um, why don't you give me an example of maybe a, a unique solu solution that uh, Elite created and implemented? Mm -hmm. I mean, this what is where this question... Huh? What's that? Oh, I was going to say, or you could tell me like, what's been your favorite project that you worked on and why? Well, I'm, I mean, I love, I think I love all, all the projects for the most part. Um, I think I like projects that are kind of more advanced, uh, like using technologies like line tracking, um, where basically like the robot can like follow, say for instance, a parts coming down a conveyor, the robot will follow that and go to pick it up. So the conveyor never has to actually stop. Okay. Um, okay. so technologies like that, vision systems, 
But one of the main things that I'm excited about right now is the, the mirror projects. Um, one, because it's, it's such a new technology. They're, to me, they're very simple uh, to set up and they're not, to me, they're not very, um, you don't need to be very, very highly skilled to be able to implement one. But it's more so of seeing the future and innovation, innovation behind it. Okay. And like how we're going to see the future of our factories and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of like an industry route that I kind of want to head down a little bit as a company. Mm -hmm. um, these things are even being implemented in like hospitals and stuff. Okay. And uh, for like delivering like the medicine carts, like they'll have the medicine cart mounted on top of that or um, the food carts will be mounted on top of these things. Um, and so they're, they can be pretty much implemented anywhere. You could have them in an office space, you know, where like Sally Sue has to deliver parts to Bill or deliver paperwork to Billy on, on floor three or whatever, where you could hand that to your mirror robot or whatever, and it would go and take it to them and drop it off for you basically. Sure, sure. And I could see that, um, especially in, you know, where you've got like an Eli Lilly where, or a larger company where you've got multiple buildings, yeah, uh, facilities to, you know, go across. So it's not like you're just going up a floor or down a floor. It really is kind of a hike. So it, it saves time. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, if you could share one secret to your company's success, what would that be? I think it's our ability to move quickly. Okay. Tell so, me. So, uh, one thing I've seen in this industry and like kind of pushed me to do my own thing was I feel like the industry moves too slow. Okay. Um, there, like projects could be implemented. Say, for instance, like, it is not uncommon to have a project and you're working on it three to six months just on like before you even ex get a, a, a bid accepted. Um, so you're spending three to six months of time on kind of minutia stuff instead of like just pulling the trigger and going with it. Uh, so we try to be quick in, in res being responsive in emails uh, so we get an email and it's generally sent out. You have a response back within 24 hours. Um, engineering, uh, any type of engineering changes that need to be made, you know, we're going to get those out as quickly as possible. It's basically we get an email that's a request saying, hey, we needed this thing changed. As long as we have the availability, we're going to open up that software right now and start making the edits, okay. get it sent back to whoever. And, and, and have that within, you know, 24 to 48 hours, depending on how big the edit is, but, right. Uh, right. but yeah. That's a, that's a nice turn uh, as far as, um, and nice to have that flexibility. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add for today? Um, I think the industrial automation space is a great place to be. Um, I, it's probably one of the least amount of schooling that you can go through to get kind of the highest amount of pay. Okay. Um, so I would definitely suggest to anybody who's debating on going to college and whatnot to kind of go down the automation industry. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's only growing and uh, it's a great road to go down. Uh, to do that, do you have to have the engineering background or does um, like Ivy Tech, are there other uh, community schools that offer s smaller programs to help yeah. people get up and running quicker? Yeah. Yes. So Ivy Tech offers something, offers, uh, they have a couple different programs over there. Um, there's Vincennes University. They have some, I think it's getting to the point where I think a lot of schools are starting to have some type of robotics program. Um, and actually me personally, that's, I, that's all I have is just kind of the robotics back, background of, uh, I'm an Ivy Tech graduate. 
I have two degrees. I have an industrial technologies degree and advanced automation or robotics degree. Okay. Um, okay. And then from there, it's just been like self-education and going through just designing systems and out of the need. Um, I started doing electrical engineering because uh, at, at my past employer, um, they didn't have any an electrical engineer on staff. And we would send something out and it would take weeks to get that back. And it's like, we just need this change and we need it now, you know? And so I started picking up on doing electrical engineering work and basically self-taught myself electrical engineering. That's a skill and a great talent. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Um, And, uh, and a big thing is that, um, Working for a systems integrator is your best bet as far as gaining the skill set, gaining skill sets. Um, I I made a video somewhat recently on our channel um, talking about getting into the industry and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's comparable to almost being at least like a three X of experience to say, for instance, going to working at a, Toyota as maintenance. So if you went to work at Toyota for maintenance, mm-hmm. um, it would basically take you nine years to gain the amount of experience that it would take you three years as, as a systems integrator. Okay. All right. Thank you for explaining that. Cause I wasn't, <laughs> um, it, that's, that's amazing as far as being able to learn that much in a concentrated amount of time. Yeah, it's because everything's so streamlined and you're working directly with stuff. And a lot of these companies, like a Toyota, they don't even really want you to touch the PLC. They may let you look at it, like go in and look at the code and watch it run. Um, But the majority of these companies don't even want to let you touch the PLC, whereas, you know, you're getting hands-on with the PLC and writing PLC code and or robot code or whatever it may be. Um, connecting the different systems together because there's a whole layer of interfacing to be able to get a robot and a PLC to talk to each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like majority of uh, companies, you'll never, you'll never do that almost. Like there's probably only like one or two guys in that Toyota facility that even even has the capability to, to be able to get like two new pieces of equipment to talk to each other. Hmm. Interesting. So it sounds like there's a lot of different directions with the growth of uh, industrial automation, there's a lot of different directions you can go within that and a lot of different job opportunities. Yeah. That's great. So if anyone has any questions or comments, um, how can they best reach you? Uh, So at EliteAutomationUSA.com, I pretty much have all our contact information there. We have, my phone number, email, and then we have our LinkedIn, um, Facebook pages, all that good stuff. Uh, probably stay the most active on LinkedIn as far as like updates and whatnot. Um, and then other than that, just can be reached by phone or email. Why don't you just tell us, tell our audience what your email is? Uh, my email is Malachi, M-A-L-A-C-H-I, at EliteAutomationUSA.com. Okay, great. And um, one other thing I forgot to ask, where is Elite Automation located? So we're located out of Evansville, Indiana. Okay, and I assume that you do work for Nationwide. Nationwide, yep. That's great. Um, Thanks for joining me today on Buckaroo TV, uh, Malachi. It's been fun. I've enjoyed learning more. uh, And it's been funny listening to the birds chime in uh, (laughs) part of the way through the process. And to our viewers and listeners, if you have any questions, let us know. And thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel, Buckaroo TV. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks for viewing Buckaroo TV. If you'd like to learn more about B2B marketing for manufacturing and related industries, please visit us at gobuckaroo.com. 